Now we need to look at primary and secondary cells. Cells. You know that in chemistry, if you have an electron flow, you can produce chemical reactions. Starting with an electron flow, you can get that to happen. You do this in electrolysis. But you can also do the same thing backwards. You can have a chemical reaction to produce an electron flow. And that's basically what a cell does. A chemical reaction takes place and you have a transfer of electrons. This is the chemical process that we have. We have a, a cell and in this cell we have some chemicals that are going to react. For example, we have carbon and manganese dioxide and we have a metal which is uh, the zinc rod. Now you know the zinc likes to release electrons. It used to, likes to be ionized and to react with the, uh, uh, the, the, the dioxide and uh, will release electrons. So this reactive positive zinc ions leave the electrode to compete with the carbon and the manganese and in doing that they release electrons. Uh, so that's what a cell is. Electrons are produced on this electrode and they're um, taken in on this electrode. So we basically have a negative and a positive terminal of this cell. The products, however, will be ammonia, manganese oxide and manganese hydroxide, which are all a little bit nasty. Here's another cell. We have a, a metal there and we have sulfuric acid and this is the the basis of the, the chemical reaction that takes place here. And here again we will get a positive and negative terminal. So what are the, the main features of a cell? Firstly, it's convenient, it's small, it's portable. Secondly, once the cell is spent, when it's finished, it must be thrown away. So this has an effect on the environment. Also, it produces the current going in one direction, it's direct current. And you know of one direction, and wait for it, here it comes. This is one direction. Unfortunately, there's no music to go with this, but you can just see these, these guys here. That's enough of that, I think. Primary cells and secondary cells, let's say a little bit more about them, about their similarities and differences. Primary cells. Now, we know that a chemical reaction releases the electrons. The electrons flow from negative to positive around a circuit. And they go in one direction, DC. When the chemical reaction is complete, there's no more flow of electrons because the chemicals have been used up. And then the batteries have to be thrown away afterwards or disposed of. Secondary cells, however, there's a chemical reaction that releases electrons. The electrons flow from negative to positive. It's in one direction again. But in a secondary cell, the reaction can be reversed so that you can put electricity back into the into the, the, the cell and you can reverse the chemical process. So you basically recharge the battery. And that means the batteries can be reused. So these are rechargeable batteries. Here we have a graph showing the voltage supplied by battery against the hours of use when it gives a hundred milliamp uh, current. The main features here are that the initial potential difference is a little bit higher than the 1.5 that is advertised but then it drops very quickly at the start. Then you have a long period of a, like a plateau of roughly constant potential difference. Notice that it does reduce slightly during this time and once all the chemicals are used up, then it's no longer able to produce that potential difference. So then it drops off very rapidly. Now I have a question referring to this red line. What is the charge available by this cell? How do you calculate the total charge? You need one of the formula from the data booklet. And let's do that. The formula is the current is the rate of flow of charge, charge divided by time, but we need to rearrange to get the charge. The current you know is 100 milliamps, the time is equal to 20 hours, so we have 2100 milliamp hours. Second question, 
What is the energy stored in this cell? Here again, you need the data booklet to find an appropriate equation. Energy is equal to power times time, and we know that the power is equal to the current times by the voltage. So volts times current times by time. The volts is 1.5 roughly. The, the current is 0 0.1 amps. And the time in SI units is going to be 20 hours times by 3,600. Gives a total energy of 10,800 joules in the lifetime of that battery. And that's basically what you need to know about primary and secondary cells.